talk about air compressors now and installing them. First of all, the air compressor not only is probably the most expensive portion of your air brakes brake system, so you want to look after it, you want to protect your investment. And it's not just a matter of uh, taking something off, a component off, a compressor off, and putting another one on. There's things that you need to check and look after to make a good air compressor installation. Let's start with the simple things. Let's start with the gaskets, okay? So depending on the engine, um, what I've done is I've had a look at the Cummins gasket, for example. The drain hole on the Cummins is quite large, right? But the oil hole is not so large. So what we're concerned with when it comes to gaskets on the front of the air compressor is be careful that you don't load it up with silicone that you might restrict the oil flow, okay? Now when it comes to the uh, Caterpillar or Mac gasket, not so much of an issue, right? Because the cavity is quite large here on the front of the cat and the Mac. But when we get into the Detroit compressors, whether it be the older style or the newer style that you might find like on a 109 430, the drain hole becomes an issue because it's smaller. And a lot of techs we find use way too much silicone when installing this gasket. We know that we, you need to put something on it to keep it in place so when you slide the compressor in and put your bolts in you don't have the gasket moving around on you. So we recommend if you're going to use silicone, be sure that you only use a little bit, just enough to hold the gasket still. You don't want to restrict the flow so that the oil can't get out of the compressor. Because if that's the case, the compressor is going to flood an oil and pump instantly, right? So let's be careful that we don't use too much sealant. And if we're going to use something like a, a Permatex material or a high-tech spray, we recommend those things. They will stick just as well and you don't have to worry about that silicone issue. Another thing that's really important we feel on changing a compressor is why not take the time and change the D2 governor. You know the governor works in conjunction with the unloader on the compressor to make sure that it shuts off and comes on at the right time. So why not take the time, spend that little bit of money, it doesn't cost much to buy a governor, and install a governor with your new compressor. Why not start out fresh? Another thing to keep in mind is that your old compressor is probably being changed because it's pumping oil, right? All air compressors migrate a bit of oil, as it were, and as they get older and tired and wear out more and more, they start to migrate more oil out of that discharge line. Well, where does it go? Well, that oil goes down that hot wire braided line for the first six or eight feet, and as it migrates out of the compressor, that compressor hole might start off as a 5 8 hole, right? But as that oil continues to come down the line and it's hot, it builds up layers. So you put your new compressor on, and now you don't have a 5 8 ID line on your compressor. No, you might have a quarter inch line. You've got all that restriction. So we recommend that the discharge line be changed on every compressor. You see, you can look at it and people say, well, I can blow through it but you can blow through a sixteenth of an inch as well. But can you imagine the extra head pressure, how hot your compressor is going to run if you don't have a proper outlet for the air to flow down to the dryer. So we recommend that the discharge line be changed each time. Another thing to per take uh, precaution in is the oil feed at the back of the compressor. So your oil line for the most part goes into the rear, whether it be here or at the side, a lot of, the majority of compressors feed from the back. Some are through the crank like the Max are, and some are at the side of the compressor, but wherever the line that leaves your engine and comes to your compressor is, we recommend that that line either be changed or really closely inspected. Because if you don't have proper oil pressure going to your compressor, well, you know what happens when you don't have oil to a crankshaft. So make sure your oil line is in good condition when you change your, to your new compressor. The other thing is the drive gear. The uh, drive gears that are on compressors today for the most part are steel gears. Good idea to have a good look at the teeth and make sure they look okay. The majority of them are reusable. For the most part the steel gears that are on compressors today if they're inspected and checked can be reused. Sometimes though you'll find that they've got a chip or too much wear and if that's the case they need to be changed. Some of the drive gears today are made of a fiber-like material. Where this is the case, they're not a reusable gear. 
the steel portion of the gear will separate from the fiber in time. So we recommend that if you're going to, if you have a fiber gear on your compressor, that you don't reuse it. Only the steel gears are to be reused on your compressor. You notice on the side of this particular compressor there's a pop-off valve. Well, the pop-off valve is a, a feature that's on all of the, a lot of the Bendix and newer compressors today. Uh, the reason being is this pop-off valve is set at 250 psi. So uh, when you get to a certain pressure on your uh, air system, if you get a restriction, this will pop off and protect your compressor from blowing up. So if you didn't blow a head gasket and you continued to pump air, well, what would happen is, uh, of course, you could have catastrophic failure uh, in your crankshaft. So a pop-off valve is recommended in all types of compressors, and they can be plumbed even if there isn't a port for them. Uh, there is a kit that you can buy to make sure you have a pop-off valve. The last thing is the intake. The majority of compressors today are turbocharged, and the turbocharged air is usually clean, right, because it's tied right into your, uh, your compression side of your turbocharger, so it's a clean air source, which is good. You get a new gasket to seal this area uh, when you get your compressor, so make sure that the surface of your uh, intake is clean on the other side. The compressor will already be clean, but to the box that your airline runs from, make sure that's clean. And sometimes those hoses get so soft, so pliable, that uh, they'll collapse. When the boost pressure comes on, you can actually suck those hoses closed. So make sure that your hose is in good condition from your intake. Some of the older compressors are still naturally aspirated, and they run an air filter in there. So every 20,000 miles or so, it's a good idea to check your air filter, because you will get a little bit of oil out of your intake usually, and it, in time, will clog your filter. So recommendation is every 20,000 miles, change your air filter on your naturally aspirated compressors. But like I say, the majority today are turbocharged, and that's how we recommend it too. A turbocharged compressor gives you a little more CFM, plus it gives you a clean source. So now you've got your compressor on your truck, you've checked all those things, now what are you going to do? Well, we recommend that you uh, give them a little time to break in. So here's what we suggest. Throttle your truck up to 1,000 RPM and open your wet tank so that you maintain about 80 pounds PSI pressure coming from your compressor. That way your compressor never unloads, it sits there and works at 80 pounds and let it run for 20 minutes or a half an hour like that. What that does is it seats all your valves, your rings, and then go back after your compressor's run and no doubt it'll be hot and uh, check it for leaks. Make sure that everything that you've done is good, that you don't see any oil or antifreeze leaking anywhere. The front end is sealed to your engine. And by doing those things, we feel that uh, your compressor will last you a long time and you're protecting an investment that you've made in purchasing a new air compressor.